Let's now move on to item number 41. Which of the following are the roots of x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0? Is it negative 2, negative 3, 2 and 3, I'm 5 and 1, negative 1, or negative 5? When we speak about the roots, these are the values of your variable x that satisfy the equation. So from here, we could actually approach this using factoring. x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0 could be factored as x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. And by the zero property of multiplication, we, can, we will equate each factor to 0 and solve for x. So we have, if x plus 2 equals 0, then negative 2 is the value of x. And if x plus 3 equals 0, then x is negative 3. That's why the values of x sub 1 and x sub 2 are negative 2 and negative 3. And these are your roots. We have letter A. 42. Which of the following quadratic functions has a maximum point? So actually all of these represent quadratic functions. Um, but we have to remember, when does a, a quadratic function either opens upward or downward and the vertex could be a maximum or a minimum point? And you have to remember that a quadratic function of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to zero, has a vertex which is a maximum if the value of a is less than zero. Meaning, if the leading coefficient here is negative, then surely this parabola um, opens downward. So we are looking for a quadratic function with negative a. So the first one, it's x squared plus 5, the leading coefficient. Again, I take note if it has to be written this way in this format. So here, A is positive. So I'm sure this opens upward and the vertex is a minimum. Here, the second one, it could be written as Y equals 3X squared plus 7. And here, it's positive. So I'm sure it doesn't have a maximum value. For the third one, it could be rewritten or uh, as y equals negative x squared plus 13. So you see the leading coefficient is negative. So I'm sure this opens downward and the vertex is a maximum. And if you have y equals 5 minus x quantity squared, simplifying that makes y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. So this still opens upward and thus no maximum. Hence, the correct answer here is letter C. Let's have the next one, 43. Find the vertex of y equals x squared plus 8x plus 9. Um, so the vertex, in finding the vertex of a parabola, um, you could employ using a certain formula, or you can just do completing the square. In my case, I will be doing completing the square for now. So if I have y equals x squared plus 8x plus 9, um, you see you have here x squared plus 8x. And to complete the square, remember, uh, you divide the coefficient, uh, the 8 here by 2, and you square the result. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared will be 16. So. <coughs> I group them, this one, and I added 16. So I have here y equals the group x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 9. However, I am only operating on one side. And to counteract, to preserve equality, if I added 16 here, I should also subtract 16 to, be, to maintain equality, right? x squared plus 8x plus 16 now is a perfect square trinomial. So thus, it could be expressed as a square of a binomial. You get the square root of the first term, x squared, that's x. Square root of 16, that's 4. And the middle term is plus, so it should be plus in the middle. So you square it. So you have x plus 4 quantity squared here. 
9 minus 16 is negative 7. And this is now the vertex form of this parabola. And remember, to get the vertex, no, this is x minus h quantity squared plus k. So the vertex at hk, so you, x plus 4, just change the sign, negative 4. And here, just copy it, negative 7. Hence, the vertex of this parabola is negative 4, negative 7. That's letter D. I hope you got it correctly. Next number, 44. A stone was thrown upward and the vertical distance S in feet with respect to time T in seconds is related by S equals negative 16 T squared plus 96 T plus 145. At what time will the stone attain its maximum height? You see, um, in this equation, the leading coefficient is negative. So we are sure that the parabola opens downward and that the vertex is a maximum. So I'm sure that this has a maximum point. But at what time? One second, two seconds, three seconds, or four seconds? You could also approach this using calculus if you want to. But for now, we will be finding, we could actually be finding the vertex only of your parabola. And if you are familiar with this, uh, but I will not show the derivation, this is the formula for hk or the vertex of your parabola, where your h or the x element of your vertex is negative b over 2a, and the k or the y element of your vertex is 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. But since you are looking only for the time, remember that the height here is a function of time. So this negative b over 2a will give you the max, the, the time for it to reach its maximum, whereas 4ac minus b squared all over 4a is the maximum height. With such, we are looking only for time, so we'll be needing the negative b over 2a. Our a here is negative 16, our b is 96, and our c is 145. By substitution, that's negative of 96 all over 2 times negative 16. Negative over negative is positive, and 2 times 16 is 32. And 96 over 32 gives 3. Therefore, <coughs> the stone will attain its maximum height at 3 seconds. And the follow-up question is, for item 45, at what, what is the maximum height? So you have two options. The first option is you will substitute the 4ac minus b squared. Uh, you will look for the value of 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. And by substitution, that's 4 times negative 16 times 145 minus b squared, that's 96 squared all over 4a, 4 times negative 16. Using your calculators, it will give you 289. But aside from that, in the previous slide, the h is 3. You could also substitute 3, that value of h here, um, which is 3. It becomes negative 16 times 3 squared plus 96 times 3 plus 145. And if you simplify that, that's still 289. So you have two options in getting the maximum height. Whatever the value of h, substitute in the this one. Or you can just directly use 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. The correct answer here is letter C. Next one. Okay. What is the sum of the roots of 3x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0? So this is written in standard form, equals 0. Okay, is it negative 5 thirds, 8 fifths, 3 eighths, or 8 thirds? We can see from here, if you could recall Vieta's formulas, I think, um, oh, what's that? But actually, Vieta's formulas is helpful for the sum and product of roots. That is, 
if x sub 1 and x sub 2 are the roots of the quadratic equation in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where your leading coefficient a is not equal to 0, then <coughs> the sum of the roots is simply negative b over a, and the product of the roots is, or x sub 1 times x sub 2 is c over a. Since we have 3x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0, and we are looking for the sum of the roots, so that's negative b over a, our b here is 5 and our a here is 3. So by substitution, that's negative 5 over 3, and that's letter a. Okay. Next one. 47. What is the product of the roots of 3x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0? It's still the same uh, problem with 46. It's just that we're looking for the product. And the product based on the Vieta's formulas is C over A. And the C here is what? The C here is 8. And the A here is 3. And by substitution, uh, x sub 1 times x sub 2 is 8 thirds. And that is letter D. All right. I hope you got them correctly as well. 48. If the sum of 11 consecutive integers A, B, C, D, and so on until K is zero, what is K minus A? Is it 8, 10, 12, or 14? From here, um, we could actually see that A is the smallest and K is the largest, and they are all consecutive integers, okay, in this order. <clears throat> we could say that K minus A, since until K, there are 11 of them, right? And their sum is zero. There is actually, we could see that F is the middle number, right? And thus it follows that there, since their sum is zero, it follows that the middle number should be zero. And if you go to the left, you subtract by one because consecutive numbers differ by one. If you go to left, subtract by one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And if you go to the right of F, you add by one. One, two, three, four, and five. Hence, we could say that the numbers that we're looking for, it's from, it's a sum, uh, of negative 5 plus negative 4 plus negative 3 all the way until 5 based on the given rather. And this follows that A is 5, is negative 5 rather, and K is positive 5. And K minus A is 5 minus negative 5, which becomes 5 plus 5 or simply 10. And that is letter B. I hope you got them correctly. 49. Find the mean of the numbers in the calendar in the month of February 2016. Is it 14, 14.5, 15, and 15.5? Um, when I say uh, month of February, February 2016, I'm just referring only to the numbers, the 1, 2, 3, until the last number. We do not include the the 2016, we do not indicate the time or anything. It's just that the numbers, 1, 2, 3, all the way until 29. How come 29? How come not 28? <laughs> because 2016 is a leap year and it has 29 days for sure. And <clears throat> we need, since we are looking for the mean or the arithmetic average, it's important that you add everything and divide by 29 because there are 29 of them. And we know for a fact that to get the sum of the first and natural numbers, it's uh, starting from one until the last number. It's the last number times the last number plus one, 29 times 30 divided by two, that's for sure. So the numerator here is equal to 29 times 30 over two. But we still have to divide by 29, right? That's why we have it here. And if you have this, 
this becomes 29 times 30, the 2 will go here in the denominator because you're dividing. And that's 2 times 29 in the denominator. You could see that 29 divided by 29 is 1. And what is left is 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Hence, we are sure that the sum of the numbers in the month of February 2016 is 15. Or to make the long story short, there is an easier way. To get the, the mean of all the numbers there, consecutive numbers, all you have to do is add the first and the last, divide by 2. 1 plus 29, 30, divided by 2, we have 15. Okay, and we have one more. By the way, the answer here is letter C. Let's have one more. In how many ways can three children be selected from a group of 10? Is it 120, 140, 620, or 720? We know that in this case, order does not matter as long as the children is within the, as the selected group. So this involves combination problem. And the formula for the combination of n objects taken r at a time is ncr equals n factorial all over n minus r factorial r factorial. And note that your n here should be greater than or equal to your r. So here we have 10 objects and we are going to get three at a time. So by substitution, that's 10 factorial all over 10 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. And for that, 10 factorial could be expressed as uh, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. How come I stop with 7 factorial? Because I have here a 10 minus 3 factorial, which is 7 factorial. And I know that they will divide and simplify into 1. 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So what is left is 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 6. Or if you simplify that, 120. And that is the answer that we're looking for, letter A. So I hope you got them all correctly. Or I mean, I hope you got high scores. And I wish you all the best for your examinations. With that, TYVM, thank you very much and a great day to one and all, and God bless us all.